So when we're talking about Squarespace's Fluid Engine Editor, we basically just mean the drag and drop page builder that you get when you are designing a website on Squarespace 7.1. And depending on when your website was set up and which version you're using, assuming you're using the latest version of Squarespace, which is Squarespace 7.1, when you go in to edit your pages, you might have access to the classic editor, or you might be able to design your pages using this new Fluid Engine drag and drop editor, which I'm going to show you today. So if you head into your Squarespace website and click on add a section, you probably are going to see something like this, where you can add a range of different pre-designed layouts, or you can go ahead and add a blank section to your page where you can just add any block to a page and click and drag it around the grid area. I'll talk more about this in a minute. If you have any existing pages on Squarespace, they might actually look something like this when you come into the editor, where you have your content blocks and then you have these blue lines and plus buttons asking you if you want to add more content blocks. And you can still technically drag and drop these blocks around, but it's much less flexible. You can't really see the grid when you are moving things around and you can't do things like overlap blocks and things like that. You'll You'll also notice there is a little upgrade button in the top left corner, which is suggesting that you might want to upgrade this section of your page into the Fluid Engine Editor. But I would only recommend you do this with your existing pages once you have finished watching this video and maybe had a little test and a play around on creating new pages to play around with the Fluid Engine Editor first because it is very different and you don't want to muck up your live pages on your website. So I'm just using one of the Squarespace Fluid Engine pre-built sections, which you can add as many as you like to a page by just clicking on add section. You can browse them here, or you can start with a blank section like I showed you just now. And I want to first talk you through the section settings for a Fluid Engine section like this, because they are slightly different to the classic editor sections. And just with building any page on Squarespace 7.1, you build out the page section by section. So if you do need to add any more, just click on add section below. This is a really great flexible way to build pages because you can delete section by section, you can duplicate any sections that you like, and you can even click the arrows to reorder sections as well. So it just means it's really flexible and it allows you to have different settings for each of the sections on your page as well, which I'm going to show you. So if we head over to the right hand corner and click on edit section, and if you click on the colors and the background tab, these are all set up in the exact same way as the classic editor. So I'm not going to cover those um, in this tutorial, but if we click on the format, you'll see this is very different from the options that you get on a classic editor section or a page using the old um, page editor on Squarespace. The main difference being that we have this kind of grid layout and we can essentially move any block or reshape any block to snap to this grid and this helps us to keep things in alignment. You can also, when you are editing the page, if you tap the G key on your keyboard, this will make the grid show up and you can make it disappear as well. Um, this doesn't have an effect on your live website, this is just while you are editing the site. It's just again helpful to make sure that things are symmetrical and in alignment. But if we go to edit the section in the format tab, you can set how many rows you want in this section of your grid. So this will just make the section taller. Um, you can also hover down here at the bottom and select this blue button and click and drag to resize the grid as well. You can also set the gap between the rows and the columns on this grid as well. So you can make them much closer so there's no space in between, or you can set your own custom width and height of the padding or the space between these grids. Now where this is useful is if you were doing something like um, a two column text layout. So let me just demonstrate for you here. If we created these two text blocks, and line them up next to each other to create this kind of two column layout, you might want to increase the space in between these two text columns, in which case playing around with the width of the spacing between the rows can help to increase that space. But typically, unless you are a designer, I would suggest just sticking with the default spacing because this is really only useful if you are um, designing more complex layouts. The other thing you can do in the section settings is choose the padding height at the top and the bottom of the section. So you can choose it to be small like this, medium or large. And this is the area where you can't actually place any content blocks, but it just creates space between this section and the top of your website or this section and another section, for example. It's referring to this space here. You can also set your own custom height 
or something new you can do with the fluid engine editor is also toggle this fill screen off and it will allow you to move all of the content blocks to the very edge, the top and the bottom of the section, which can be really useful when you're designing layouts like this one, where you want there to be kind of a split screen type of look where the image is going all the way to the top, the bottom and the outside edge of the page, because in Fluid Engine as well, you can actually drag all your content blocks to go outside the grid at each side to stick to the very edge of the page. Now, again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend playing around with this unless you're a designer because it needs to be really intentional when you are moving blocks to the very edge of the website. You wouldn't want to do this with text blocks, for example, or realistically anything other than an image or a gallery block. So just be aware of that. So when you want to add content to a section in Fluid Engine, all you need to do is click this add block button in the top left corner, as I showed you before, and you can add any kind of block to this section and just click and drag it around. You've probably also noticed that you are therefore able to overlap different blocks, which is great for creating more interesting and unique designs. When you click on a block as well, you also have different settings here. You can duplicate the block, you can delete the block, and you can also set it to move backwards or forwards to help with aligning everything when you are overlapping blocks. There's also another setting which is mainly relevant for image blocks, button blocks, and sometimes text blocks, where if we click on the image block and click the pen icon here and go to design, you have this option of fit, fill, or shape. Now a shape will crop the image into whatever shape you choose here. Fill will expand the image, no matter what size or shape of image you have uploaded in the content section here, it will expand or crop that image to fill just the size of the shape that you have created with this image block. So it will effectively just span to the full edges of the block you've created. However, if you click on fit, this means that no matter what shape I turn this um, image block into and how I move it around, the image crop will never change. So you're not gonna end up with um, edges being cut off of images that you don't want to be cut. You can make it bigger by expanding it like that, but me just moving it around is not going to cut the image in half or anything. It's going to retain its original crop. And this is a really important setting to be aware of because what I often see people struggling with on Fluid Engine is particularly this setting when it comes to button blocks. So I've just added a button here to the page and you can see that it's quite large. And actually, if I click on it, I can make it as big as I want, which you realistically don't want on a website. You want all of your buttons to be uniform in shape and you can alter what that uniform shape and design is like in the site styles of the website by going up to the top right here. But when you're on a page, you don't realistically want to have the freedom of completely changing the shape of this button. It just doesn't look very professional. So what you're going to want to do is click on the button block and click the pen icon. And on the design tab, you again have this option to fit or fill. So what it's doing at the moment is it's expanding the whole button to fill the space that I've created with this block. But if we just select fit, then it's going to go back into the uniform shape using the padding height and width that I have set specifically in the site styles. With button blocks, you can also change the alignment of them like so. And also you have the option in your site styles to set different designs for your primary, secondary and tertiary buttons. But as I say, I'd recommend you do that in the site styles rather than trying to define the size and the shape of these buttons using the blocks being dragged around like this. You also have a similar setting when it comes to text blocks. So just like the classic editor, in order to edit your text, you can just click on the text and start typing and you get all of these um, text formatting options. And if you actually click on this button, it will expand the text again, just like with the button block and the image block to fill the block size that you have created there as you're dragging it around. If you just want to keep your text to a uniform size based on the site style settings that you've created for heading one, heading two, heading three, make sure that this is turned off so that it is uni using that uniform styling. Um, it can be great to use this for some impactful text around your website occasionally, but usually I would have that switched off. Another setting that you get in Fluid Engine is alignment within the blocks you create. So I'm just changing this image to fit within the block. And then you'll be able to see here, if I click on the image block, we have this button here and it's saying that the image is aligned vertically. What I can also do is click on this and align it to the top of the block and align it to the bottom of the block if I would like. And this is the same with any block that you add to your page, such as button blocks, 
and text blocks. And text blocks are probably going to be the ones where you're going to be playing around with this the most. And where this is particularly useful is when you want to align things um, centrally to any blocks or content that is opposite that block. So this text, for example, I want it to align kind of so that it is central to this image. And I could just kind of estimate where that is. Or what I could do is drag the content block and change the height of it so that it matches the image block opposite. And then I'm just going to click on center align for the text. And this will perfectly center the text within the height of the block that you've created, which if you make that the exact same as a block on the other side, then that's going to help you keep things centered to the opposite side blocks. One common issue that I also see people doing on um, Fluid Engine is accidentally overlapping um, blocks. So for example, with text blocks, because this text is aligned to the top of the block and I've made the block quite tall, so there's lots of space below the text, it would be easy for me to just click and drag this button up here to sit directly under the text. But what is actually happening there is the text block is then overlapping the button block by accident, not deliberately like I've overlapped these image blocks. And you don't want this to happen because then if we resize the page, you'll see that the text obviously has to move because we're making the screen smaller and it is now overlapping the button block. And this is a really common thing that happens with Fluid Engine. What you want to be doing is making sure that these blocks don't have all of this space kind of hanging down below. So just click and drag it up to where it gives you kind of a red line saying this is as short as you can make this block. And then you want to make sure that any blocks that you add underneath it do not overlap the bottom edge of the block above it. So then if we adjust the page, you can see that the text is never actually going to overlap the button block below it. It's just going to fill the space that I've given it and the block size and height will adjust as your screen size changes as well. So let's say that you've got a web page designed in Fluid Engine and you need to make some edits to the text. If I was to remove some of this text and just make this text block shorter, like so, you'll see that the button block underneath it had just moved up or jumped up to make sure that it was still aligning with the bottom of the text block. Likewise, if I add more text here, the button block moves automatically and shuffles down. Sometimes what can happen if you paste in a large amount of text on your page because you're planning to edit it within the page editor, so you're getting rid of this, um, you're getting rid of lots of this, and you're making edits as you go along, what can happen is that because as you were adding more text, the blocks were all kind of shuffling down a bit, you end up with a larger space at the bottom of your section than you originally started with. If we just toggle on the grid here, you can see what I mean. So originally the bottom edge of the grid was actually up here where the bottom edge of this image is. And you don't want to end up with too large a gap um, where the grid layout is because you're then gonna end up with asymmetrical spacing on this page. So you've got the padding at the top here, which is already set. You've got the padding at the bottom here but now we've also got these extra two rows, which are adding a lot more space to the bottom of the section that we don't want. In that case, just remember to always click and drag up the rows here so that the bottom edge of any of your content blocks are sat nicely with the bottom edge of the grid. The other key difference to be aware of with Fluid Engine is the difference in the mobile editing options. So you'll see up in the top right corner that there is the option to edit in desktop view, which is what we are on, and also the mobile view as well. And it's got that little blue dot because it is indicating that I've made changes to the desktop version of the website that I need to double check look okay on the mobile view of the website. So if we click on this, this is going to show us it in mobile view. And you'll see sometimes that the mobile view looks totally different to the desktop view, depending on what blocks you've added, um, in what order, maybe you've moved things around a bit and overlapped things on the desktop version, you always need to make sure that you come in and check the mobile version. And you can actually independently edit everything to do with the location of a block, the size of a block and the shape of the block as you're moving it around and the alignment of the blocks. You can edit all of these independently from the desktop view. So that just means that if I make these changes in mobile view, the desktop view will stay exactly the same and that won't be changed, which is so useful because for example, on the desktop view here, automatically with the previous Squarespace page editor, if I had added some text here and an image here, on mobile view, the text would show at the top like it is now and the image would show at the bottom and I would have no option to change that unless I were to use code to do that. Whereas now with Fluid Engine, I can just move these around, completely change the shapes and sizes of them 
and change the number of rows um, on the mobile view section and then go back to the desktop version and none of that has changed. It's completely independent on the mobile option. The only thing that isn't independent is the actual content of the blocks. So I can't change an image on the mobile version and retain the original image that I had on the desktop version. Likewise, I can't edit the content of the text block on mobile um, and have the original content still stay on the desktop version. The content has to be exactly the same on both types, but the shape, location, alignment, things like that can be different. So just always make sure that you come into the mobile version, make sure things aren't overlapping by accident, like for example, this button. You want to still be following the rules of having none of these blue line blocks overlapping each other and then go back to the desktop version to make sure that everything looks good on both types of devices. So that's my tutorial of Squarespace Fluid Engine. This is available on all your website pages except from auto layout style pages. So for example, when you're adding a section where you've got this little I button here, this is called an auto layout page. This is edited in a totally different way using this edit content button than the Fluid Engine editor. And also this doesn't apply to product pages or blog posts yet um, on Squarespace. This is just for standard pages where you are adding sections with these blue buttons here. Hope you found this helpful and let me know if you've got any questions in the comments.